All right. I got the pleasure of interviewing Dom Trivoli. How do you pronounce your last name? Trivolini. Trivolini. Okay. Trivolini. The heavyweight winner at the North Americans, a new IFBB pro. What's up, Dom? Hey, man. How's it going? Good, good. I, uh, I knew I wanted to interview you because my brother's name is Dominic. My nephew's name is Dominic. My grandfather's name is Dominic. My cousin's name is Dominic. <laughs> Italian name, right? Yeah, yeah. What what part of Italy your, your parents are from? Uh, my grandparents um, immigrated from northern Italy. Oh, uh, okay. To the okay. Chicago area. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Well, my I'm the complete opposite. My mother's side of the family is Galabrese, and my father's was Sicilian. Gotcha. Okay. So, anyway, so how old are you now that you turned pro? Uh, I just turned twenty five. Oh, so you're a young dude, man. I tell you, man, the young blood coming up is is really good. I feel like I feel like you guys aren't getting enough credit because you're younger and you're looking better. I mean, you guys are coming bigger, harder. I mean, your shots when I saw them on Instagram, uh, especially your back shots, they were really impressive. Like really, really impressive. You know. Thank you. Who uh, do you have a coach you're working with? I work with uh, Matt Jansen. Oh wow, he's got a he's got a tribe, Matt Jansen. Yeah, he's got the the secret formula when it comes to peaking people, man. I swear. Well, uh, I go to the gym. I don't. Oh, yeah, he goes to the same gym with uh, Sean Clarita, right? Matt Jensen. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's been on my show a couple of times, and um, man, he is like more old school. You never see him in a tank top or anything like that at the gym. He's got this big baggy shirt on. You won't have no clue what he looks like. It just looks like a little truck, you know. <laughs> so, um, all right, so. Start me from the beginning. Like, how, what made you fall in love with with bodybuilding, and, and what made you take it this far? Um, you know, this all kind of happened by accident. Um, I was uh, fifteen. I was actually in a Saturday suspension in high school, and um, the lady was like, "I'm sitting in the library." She's like, "You need to do something. You know, go find a book." So I'm just looking for books and. Uh, I find this really old, dusty book called uh, Weightlifting and Bodybuilding by Franco Colombo. Oh, my God. So it's from 1987. I don't think anyone's read it since 1987. Yeah, right. So I, I picked it up and I just started reading it. I'm like, man, this guy looks fucking disgusting. Why is he so big? And like, I'm like, what am I looking at? And uh, anyways, there's a workout program in there. And I had quite a bit of uh, weight equipment in my basement. My dad was the assistant athletic director at the University of Michigan. So he was acquired a bunch of gym equipment. So I was Sometimes like, Man, that's just... a really good uh, position because that college is like, from what I understand, that college is no joke. Yeah, it's one of the, the biggest schools in, in Division One. So he had like a ton of equipment he acquired from working there. Mm -hmm. That was like left over and uh, just sitting in our basement. And there was a workout program in the book. So I just start following it. I had no idea what I was doing. And um, after about three to four months of lifting, I looked like a stage ready men's physique competitor. <laughs> and I was like, damn, this is pretty cool. Like I got a ripped six pack. I have cap delts, shoulders. Yeah, uh, I was doing everything myself. So I was like Googling nutrition stuff, Googling training stuff just to get more knowledge. And uh, after about like eight months of basement lifting after school, um, I got my mom to buy me a gym membership <laughs> at the local Anytime Fitness. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, so at this point, I'm 16 and, you know, I'm training with all my friends from high school, you know, after school and I'm getting way bigger than them and like way stronger than them at a faster rate. And this is before any kind of enhancements of any sort. So right, 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 right. I'm just eating everything in the house and training as hard as I can. And there was a larger guy at the gym. He's like, man, you should do a bodybuilding show. And I'm like, yeah, it's kind of weird, man. These guys are on stage in their underwear pose. And like, I don't know how I feel about that. Yeah. So I, it just kind of like evolved into me watching like more bodybuilding videos and stuff like that. And at 17, I decided, Hey, I'm going to do my first show. Mm -hmm. um, so I did the Michigan state championship at 17, which I won the team class. There was no other teams in there. So I decided to do a men's class and I won the men's class too at 17. Really? 
So the judges were like floored. They're like, holy shit, you're like the biggest 17 year old we've ever seen. <laughs> and dude, I can tell you straight up, I did no cardio for that prep. I hardly followed like the diet. Like, yeah, you are the I guy just, I have always hated. <laughs> I like just yeah. was working out and yeah. eating protein like I knew I should, and just showed up. And uh, you, so you're a genetic, genetic freak as well. It is. You're, you're destined to be a bodybuilder. That's it. I, after, yeah, after that show is pretty prevalent. Like, okay, maybe I should probably keep going with this. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, fast forward at 19 years old, you know, I did the team nationals where I won the overall. Um, and what was year like, was that? 2016. Okay. And so I was like, and I won it as a middleweight. Um, I was 170 pounds. And uh, I was like, all right, Branch Warren won team nationals. Jay Cutler won team nationals. Maybe I'm on to something here, yeah, you know, you not think, saying yeah. I'm the next like Jacob or anything, but um, I'm like, maybe I could be like a pretty good bodybuilder. Um, I did my first men's national at 20 and I got fourth. So I actually, I competed in July of 2016 at 170. And this is when I hired like my first serious coach mm -hmm. in June of 2017. I was 193 on stage. Damn. So I gained 23 pounds of stage weight in 10 months, but that's when like I flipped the switch of being like a contest prep bodybuilder. Like I just followed a diet and prep and then off season, I did whatever. Right. Cause I was a teenager. Like I went and ate McDonald's and shit. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. And he's like, no, you got to eat like this year round. I'm like, Oh, I'm like six meals a day every day. He's like, yeah. So I did that and I just lifted really heavy and hard and I ate six meals a day and Showed up at the Junior Nationals Open Men's Bodybuilding, got fourth. Um, did it again when I was 21. And I'm the favorite to win the show. And I'm like, I got this. I look incredible. We get backstage. And there's this guy named Dietrich Lewis shows up, who's uh -huh. top 10, 212 Olympia. Takes off his clothes. We're all like, oh, fuck. Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know I'm the like, feeling on a very, on a smaller scale. I know the feeling on a smaller scale. I was like, man, how old are you? He's like 42. I'm like, oh, uh. he could be my dad. I'm like 21. <laughs> but it was very prevalent. He had taken the show. He ended up turning pro a couple of weeks later at the yeah. Um, And then I did my first pro qualifier at 22. I got fourth at the Nationals in Miami. Um, the guys who got third, second, and first are all pros now. Mm -hmm. um, and then last year at 24, I did North Americans where I got third. And then this year, here we are. Finally got a, got the win and got the pro card. Uh, and you're 25 years old. And you were heavyweight. What was your weight on stage? I was 208.6 at pre-judging. And how tall are you? Five foot five. Damn, that's pretty fucking good, dude. Uh, so I'm always the shortest in the heavyweight class. So yeah, it's, it's, it's perfect. Yeah. So um, the year before when you came in, you said you came in third. Yes. What did you weigh and what it was heavyweight? Yeah. So that was kind of a, a fucked situation. No, excuse my language. Totally but, um, I was dead center first call out and uh, pretty, it's pretty clear that like, it looked like I was winning the class. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Matt thought so everyone in the audience thought so and then once we got pictures out a couple hours later i'm like okay i'm uh, pretty sure we got this in the bag yeah and um we came back for the night show they're like hey we're gonna just rejudge all you guys and at that point i knew i had lost and that they were going to give it to uh eric wood who ended up winning um so that was really hard to deal with um, yeah, i was actually about the same weight there as i was this year just um I took a lot of time off this past year because I had actually quit bodybuilding right before prep for like four months. Mm -hmm. um, so I was about the same weight, but much different level of conditioning this year than I was the year prior. Why do you think they gave it to the other guy in the in last year, Eric Wood? You know, Eric's been like second and third multiple times with these pro qualifiers. And it's not that he looked bad. I mean, he looked good. Um, you know, I beat him from the side and from the back poses and I, he definitely beat me in the front double, the front lat spread, he had wider shoulder girdle. Mm -hmm. Um, so, you know, I, I guess it could have gone either way, but like, 
a lot of people were shocked, uh, myself included, especially because I was dead center first call out in a five person call out, you know, yeah. one, five of us and we never got moved. So, um, you know, Eric ended up taking them. You know, I congratulated him and everything after the show. You got to be a sportsman, you know. It's yeah, not, I was never yeah. sour about it, but like, um, it takes I just you, it takes you a couple of days to get over it, right? Yeah, you know, I just used it to fuel everything. I had a friend that turned pro. Um, his name is John. He was a really good dude, man. He was like, uh, I was young, and you know, I only did four NPC shows or whatever. And he, he told me, he goes, he goes, if you're in the sport long enough, sooner or later, you're going to be holding a trophy that you know you don't deserve. And he said, and vice versa. He goes, uh, sooner or later, you're going to be, um, you know, not holding a trophy, knowing you should be. Yeah. yeah. And he said, it's just, it's just part of the game. It's just part of the game. It is. You know, I don't like to say politics or anything. I don't, I don't really, really believe in any of that stuff or at least it, 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 there's nothing you could do about it anyway and you did the man you did like the, you know the manly responsible thing you know you dusted yourself you got back on the horse and you and you went back to work and you won the next year so you know it, it, it is what it is you know i mean uh, right and you know and and that that shows the type of character that you have is the fact that you didn't give up you didn't bitch and moan you just took it and you kept rolling and that's because you're italian <laughs> <laughs> it's italian thing I always yeah, say. yeah 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 <laughs> Yeah. And that's funny because my father, my father was Sicilian. Maybe it was a Southern Italian thing or something like that. My father used to tell me Italians are the, are the worst athletes in the world. And it goes besides soccer, they can't do shit. And, yeah. and your genetics are like freaky. <laughs> I feel like there's not um, a lot of Italian bodybuilders. out. There. No, there, there isn't. There's a lot of Middle Eastern. There's a lot of, uh, uh, you know, Russian, Ukrainian, mm-hmm. uh, American, you know, obviously black American more so. But Italian guys, like, you know, and, you know, if you say that to real Italians, they get pissed on any mold of soccer players, you know, the same. Yeah. But, the, but the truth of the matter is they do the worst in the Olympics. <laughs> I never really hear about, like, Italian sports outside of, like, you know, I pay attention to, like, Formula One racing and stuff like that. Yeah. Which, yeah that's yeah. huge over there, but not, yeah. like, the original, like, normal sports people pay attention to. Did you watch that movie? Um, I'm getting off topic, but it's just a quick question since you're Italian. Did you watch that movie? Uh, oh, God. Uh, Ford versus Ferrari? Oh, yeah. yeah. You know what bothered me the most is that, what's his name? Spoke Italian. I, I, uh, who was the guy that, Lee Iacocca. Yeah. And there was that scene where they were in Italy and he was talking to the, the CEO of Ferrari and needed a translator. I'm like, come on. Dude. Uh, yeah, that wasn't accurate at all. <laughs> yeah, it's like, come on, dude. Like, even, even like my father idolized him because my father opened his own, he was a contractor and he opened his own business. I remember he bought his biography, Lee Iacocco, Safe Chrysler, so on and so forth, and blah, blah, blah. And I remember he read his biography and all the shit. And he, used to, he was like, you know, and he was like, oh, he's Italian and his parents are from Italy and all this crap and blah, blah, blah. And I watch it and I go, why, why, why he, you know, it would have been good if like the Iacocca had a translator and then shut the guy up and answered him in Italian. Right. You know, yeah. like real bravado shit, but it didn't happen that way, but whatever. All right. Back to you. Sorry about that. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Who are the guys? Now you're a younger generation, but who are the guys? Did you, once you started getting into bodybuilding, were there bodybuilders that inspired you, that motivated you, that, or that you really like looked up to? Yeah, and it's definitely the still the same people today, and that would be the late '90s, early 2000s guys. Mm-hmm. Um, obviously, Dorian Yates. I trained like the Dorian Yates style for a long time, very low volume heavyweight. Um, I still do something similar to that. I do a little bit more volume now, but um, that really built my base. Um, I paid a lot of attention, of course, to Ronnie Coleman, who trained similar. Uh, he was just a freak. Obviously, yeah. everyone loves Ronnie. Yeah. I just, the look of, you know, the late 90s, early 2000s area, era, because I really feel like bodybuilding dropped off a little bit after the J. Ronnie. Yeah, era. it did. It did, 100%. And but that's then what it, I paid then it's attention the, to. Yeah. Like, and then it started episodes. coming back recently in the last yeah. few, you know, basically once like kind of Phil and Kai thing kind of brought it back. Yeah, yeah, I that's agree. that's my opinion. But yeah, there was a dead spot. There was a dead spot, you know, and uh, you know, and, still and, saved it because I don't and, think and we'll... nobody nobody would ever admit this, you know, nobody would ever say that. But you know, 
there, you know, when Jay Cutler has been on my show and I interviewed him and he was a complete gentleman, you know, um, uh, and I, I, it's, it is my opinion that during the later half of his career, you know, it, it, the, 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 the sport was a little weak. The talent was a little bit weak. You know, the first half of his career was. That was like the peak of bodybuilding in my yeah, opinion, that yeah. era of their battling. I yeah. mean, it was immense. And that was my era. I mean, the, you know, I go a little, I'm a 46, so I go, but I am really impressed with the guys today. Really impressed with the guys today. I mean, all from from the top five in the Olympia, all the way down to guys like you that are turning pro now. And I'm like, Jesus, it's unfucking believable. The conditioning you come in, the size you come in, it's on un- un- the fullness that you come in. I mean, the 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 structure, the small waist. I mean, you know, it's like nobody's got the bubble gut anymore. Everybody knows that you got to take control of that. And yeah. and I f- the, I feel like the older guys. The older bodybuilders, you know, the don't give the young guys as much as, as much credit as they should. You know, it. You guys are impressive. It's 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 real. It it really is true. You know, like what? Anyway, all right. So now you're a pro. So what's the plan? Are you gonna jump into a two twelve show? Or are you gonna take the year off and try to put some more weight on? So we actually plan on taking a couple years off. Mm. Um, you know, being so close to the. You know, for me, bodybuilding's always been about taking it as far as I can go, as big as I can get, as strong mm-hmm. as I can get. Right. And um, I also factor in my age a lot. Uh, I actually had this discussion with someone today. So I actually don't plan on competing until the spring of 2025. Um, I do happen to be getting married in May of next oh, year. Oh, congratulations, man. Thank congratulations. you. And that's like the peak of competitive season. Does she compete so- too or no? She does. She competes in figure. Oh, okay. Okay. So it's like, we're getting married, I think, the weekend of the New York Pro. Is she so Italian like, too? No, she's not Italian. Oh, man. Your grandparents must be pissed. <laughs> <laughs> she hasn't met my grandparents yet. Oh, oh shit. But, um, yeah, it's like right the peak of the season. Like, if I started prep after the wedding, there's only like two shows. And I don't want to prep going into my wedding. So, like, the whole year was kind of shot and i was okay with that Mm -hmm. um and that's if i wanted to do 212 which to be quite honest like i really don't um yeah like i said bodybuilding for me was always about taking it to the the next level um as big as i can get as strong as i can get and i actually sat down with matt talked about this with him for a while because i was like i'm like i need your honest opinion like is it even feasible for me to not just do the open but be competitive in the open he's like like absolutely, he's like Branch Warren's five foot six, Dexter Jackson five foot six. That's right. Um, they were able to do it. You just need more time. And if we look at the Open Olympia right now, there's two guys under the age of thirty. Yeah. And me being twenty five, like I feel like I have more than enough time before I even hit that prime. I oh, fully agree. Fully, fully agree. Here's the thing, though: bodybuilding and bodybuilding fans have short memories. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you don't compete, are you ready for the uh, idea of you being, because right now you're a hot name, you're a hot commodity, you know, everybody's talking about you, so on and so forth. Uh, taking two years off, um, are you ready to be, you're going to be almost forgotten about. Yeah, it's, I was, it's, it's I a sad, about it's tr- very true, but it's fun. I mean, a guy doesn't compete for six months, they forget about it, you know what I mean? It's, um, I think the only thing that really saves athletes with that nowadays that take extended time off is social media. Yeah. Like I think of Brett Wilkins, he had to take two and a half years off to go from 212 to the Olympia. That's right. And when he came back, he it like re-exploded again. Yeah, exactly. And there was a lot of hype going into the show. Yeah. Um, so I think I hate to say social media is important in bodybuilding. It very is very much is. It very much is. I had judges talk to me that said they saw me on Instagram and things like that. So they do pay attention to that. Mm-hmm. So I, there definitely will be a drop off. I totally expect that. It's kind of an inevitable. Yeah. Um, I think the only way for bodybuilders to get around that is to continually promote themselves and yeah. stay stay active. But it is, like you said, it is hard taking that much time off to um, kind of keep your name out there, so to speak. Mm-hmm. It does help being um, a part of Matt's camp. And um, very true, very true. With Raw and Revive, his two companies, because. Um, oh, good point. Very good point. Oh, yeah, I'm down so. there training at the Revive gym. Um, we're representing his companies. I'm a representation of Matt 
That's so great. it does help kind of keep my name out there, so to mm-hmm. speak. And uh, it'll be a slow buildup of hype up until that show. But um, yeah, when it when the time is ready, it'll be very much worth the wait. Yeah, no, I I agree with with everything you just said, and I think it is. I think it's a smarter move, to be honest with you. I really do, because at your age and the way you put muscle on, and I'm sure, you know, Matt, as your guidance, I'm sure you're making the right choice. There's not a doubt in my mind. Did you find your off-season diet yet? Did he give it to you yet or not yet? Yeah, so the show was Thursday, um, and it was over so late. We pretty much just went to bed. So, like, I had two free meals Friday, two free meals Saturday, and Sunday, I was right back to work. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm only up about like eight or nine pounds from what I was at prejudging, so which is pretty much just water. Right, 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 right. So, how much weight are you looking to put on uh, in the two years that you're going to take off? You know, Matt told me realistically I need to be 230 on stage. Um, yeah, 225 to 230. William Bonax, the same height as me, competes right. about between 225 to 230. Yeah. Uh, Hottie Chupan's the same height as me as yeah, well. Right, exactly. And he competes even lighter than that. I think he was like 220, yeah. 217, Hottie said. So that guy is a freak of nature. He's probably my favorite right now in the open. Just, I mean, it's just his body's insane. It's, it's like his would, conditioning. Yeah, I would love to see him up close backstage, you know, right before he goes on because his. His conditioning has to be, you know, in just insane. And and William Bonac, the same thing. I mean, I'm not a big fan, uh, but I, I, you know, there's a difference between being a big fan of the person, being a big fan of the bodybuilder. As a bodybuilder, the guy is just lights out. I mean, if when mm-hmm. he comes in shape, he is really difficult to beat, you know. Uh, but um, no, man, I, I, I fully agree. And with your genetics and, and Matt um, and Matt training you, and the super subs that uh, I'm sure you're going to use, I don't see. I don't see why you shouldn't be able to. We've seen it yeah. before, you know. We've seen. We've seen it. We've seen it before. And then if you do a show like you know in the spring of 2025, so whatever the uh, New York Pro, the Chicago Pro, well, you probably want to do a Chicago Pro, right? Because it's not far from you. I'll actually be in in Florida probably about a year from now because I'll oh, be at, okay. at Revive Gym training full time with with Matt's crew and everyone. Oh, see, I mean, there's plenty. There's plenty of shows every goddamn weekend, you know. Yeah, uh, and you got, there really is. I mean, it's just it's so. Um, yeah, man, that is that is definitely a, a good plan. Very good plan. Um, now, what about your wife? Uh, is she competing anytime soon? She's probably going to like post wedding. Um, everything is so like wedding focused right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we kind of waited till my show was over to really start like hammering the details down yeah so that's kind of where we're at now and i think once that's over uh she's gonna get on stage and it's perfect timing because like i'll be able to put more into her and her prep like she was putting into mine right because right, right. you know, that was my next XC. question yeah yeah that we was... prepped at the same time together um yeah you might you might as well commit you can't say that on youtube you might as well you might as well you know if you're gonna do it at the same time forget it you know it would be very difficult. Yeah, you ain't kidding. I, 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 there are some people that I've talked to that they're like, you know, it doesn't, you know, the, the, um, you know, the, uh, what do you call it? Uh, the diet doesn't bother me, you know, so on and so forth. And, and I'm just like, yeah, I was, I, for me, the hardest part of prep is, um, you know, I don't get like mean, like I'm not like an asshole or anything. I get so fatigued. Um, uh, so managing the fatigue, like, the last four to six weeks is very difficult. Like everything just becomes very hard to do. Yeah. Like, you true. feel like taking a shower is a task. You're yeah. like just standing there in the water. You're like, I got to dry off, man. I'm so tired. And just, <laughs> everything just begins to cooking feels difficult. You know, walking up and down the stairs, just like, it sounds so ridiculous, but um, you know, I'm always ready like early, like very early. So I have to just hold that and maintain it. And, um, I'm so laser focused that the diet doesn't bother me, even though the meals are so small. Like, yeah, I'm hungry, but I don't even like it doesn't resonate because the goal is so, so driven. Uh, but the fatigue, dude, there's nothing you can do about it. Like, it's just a bitch. Yeah. Like, yeah. It, it sucks. Yeah. On a very smaller scale, obviously, on an NPC level, I used to get very uh, 
I used to get very irritable. And I knew I was, I, I, it, I, you know, it took me some time, but I, then I came to the realization, like, I'm not, I'm, I'm not going to turn pro. I'm not that good. You know, it's just, the, it is what it is. And to put my wife and myself through this and, and knowing that I was like, okay, we're done. So I would say, I always say this to people that talk to me about it all the time. I'm like, if I was not good at this, like at the level that I've been successful at, not a chance in how would I be um, right. doing this for fun or like, I see a lot of guys here in Michigan that do like every Michigan show every year. Dude, I, I see it too. And I'm in I'm Jersey like, and in New York. Yeah. Why? Yeah, <laughs> Why are no, you, doing that? you know, I, I, I agree. And, and, you know, guys and girls, I, I agree. I see it all the time. And I'm like, you know, they, they do so many shows and they're doing, but they're on like a paradoxical treadmill. They're going nowhere fast. Right. They, they just keep doing NPC shows and NPC. And listen, you do what you want. That's great. You know, do, you know, what, 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 whatever the case may be, if that makes you happy, wonderful. But when I try to wrap my head around the reasoning of why, and you could like, you can look at them and go, you know, it's never going to happen. You know what I mean? I right. mean it's not going to happen. Um, and I try to wrap my head around why you would want to, you know, diet so hard. And why do you want to, you know, get on stage and, and, you know, um, th- become part of this selfish, self-centered sport, which it is, you have to be in order to do it. And if you weren't, like you said, if you're not an elite athlete like yourself, or even a good amateur, like, you know, if you're like, like if you're coming in the top five of the nationals or the North Americas or something like that, okay. You know, you're right there. I get it. You're right there. Yeah. Keep but going. If you come into the top five, at like, you know, the Brooklyn Grand Prix, like I did when I turned, when I came in fifth in the open, and I was 35 years old. It's like, okay, maybe I need to reevaluate some things. <laughs> I, you know, I always tell people, I'm like, if you can't go into every single show in your state and like convincingly win the overall, uh, you, you're not ready for. Right. For Nash. And because people ask me all the time, they're like, I'm, I'm ready for it. I'm like, no, no, you're not. Uh, yeah. It's a whole different animal. You want to know how I told, I, I told this, uh, I told this story a million times. You know how, what, I mean, I, I won the, uh, the Masters Brooklyn Grand Prix. I won the Masters Tri-State. I won the Masters Muscle Beach, whatever. Nobody gives a shit about Masters. And that's the truth. That's the truth. I mean, and my hat's off to them because, you know, they, they grinded it out and finally turned pro, whatever. But whatever, it doesn't matter. And I'm like, okay. I think I won three Masters overalls. All right, I think I'm ready to do a national level show. So. I go to uh, Team Universe that year, and uh, <laughs> that year John Meadows won. I was there. I watched really 2015 in TMAC. and I I was there too. I think it was a little bit before that actually. So I had a friend competing in figure, um, and I was there watching John compete like in the fourth row. I was sitting behind Juan Morel. Oh, okay, yeah, and I um, and I saw John Meadows, and I was like. Yeah, I'm never going to look like that. It's not happening. I'm never looking like that. And it was it didn't bother me. It was just a realization. It was like, look, it, this is ridiculous. Because by that point, I was in my 30s. I'm like, okay. And I went home and I talked to my wife and I was like, yeah, we're done here. <laughs> you know, that's, that's awesome, though, because delusion runs so strong in this sport. Yeah. The realization is never there for yeah. you know, a lot of the people. And I see a lot of people like not only wreck their relationships, but uh, their health. Wreck their families. Yes, their families, relationships, health. Like, even though they have absolutely, and I'm not trying to be an asshole, but like zero potential of ever doing this at a high level. You know, they'll say something like, don't you don't shit on my dreams, but you got to be realistic, man. You gotta be, yeah, you have to be realistic. You got to be real. Like somebody like you, you win the, like like Jay Cutler or Branch Moore or somebody like you, you win the team nationals. You, you're, you know, your, your future is bodybuilding. Right. You know, um, but uh, I mean, listen, there is something to be said. Don't get me wrong to uh, the uh, Vinnie Galantes who, uh, you know, don't tell pretty, don't tell, don't turn pro till they're 40 um, or 40 something. And I forgot the other guy's name that turned pro in his 40s a few years back. And then he jumped on pro. I forgot his name. Oh, Josh Wade. Well, Josh Wade. Right. There's something to be said about that. And, and, and I, I get it. You know, I understand the grind, you know, um, but I, I, I think, in my, and this is just my opinion, life, is, if, life can't be all about bodybuilding. 
mm-hmm. unless you're like I said, your age and you put and and you have the serious potential and the drive and the genetics um, and the people behind you, and then you can make a living at it. Like somebody like yourself is is gonna wind up making unless something terrible happens, God forbid. You, you're going to wind up making a good living at this. Okay. You're a young dude. You're going to wind up being one of the superstars. Okay. And that, that's just how I see it. But the, it comes a time where it's like, well, what about family? And what about business? And what about um, children? And, you know, what, what about a career? And it's like, even if it's a career in within bodybuilding, you know, there's all the facets. You know, I mean, there's other people do it all the time. Me, I mean, I do this fucking podcast. Well, you know, um, I mean, I, I have, I'm don't make any money because you might have a small podcast, but this fills the void, right? You know, I, you know, uh, that's how I feel. A, a lot of people don't. They only see the moment of like triumph on stage of you winning, but like they don't see the fact that I didn't go to college. I missed college. I missed all that experience. Right. In high school, I didn't go to prom. I was body like I didn't do any of that. Every time I go to a family event, if I do, I have my six pack meal bag with me. Mm-hmm. Like I really don't at at the level I'm at now. Um, and you know, I have other business ventures outside of like bodybuilding that generates a lot of money. So I'm not. That's good. Good for sitting you. here being a broke bodybuilder. Right. But um, you mean you're not in your mom's basement right now? No. <laughs> <laughs> But, um, you know, there's a, I really don't leave the house unless it's to go to the gym or the grocery store. Uh, yeah. And, you know, Nick Walker lives the same way. A lot of these guys live the same way we live. Yeah. And it's not always the greatest thing, but like we realize what we're good at and what potentially right. there and it makes yeah. it worth it in the end. Yeah. But dude, I've missed out on so much shit that everyone usually experiences because I've prioritize bodybuilding yeah but you know what like like i said man guys like you and like you mentioned nick walker and the you know it's worth it because you're going the you're going to be a big superstar i'm really good friends with jason Owens. he does two shows with me a week uh a week, a, oh jesus christ two shows with me a month we call a bodybuilding talk and that's how i i um you were talking about you it was mm-hmm. it was uh it's usually me, Jason, and another pro. And I had Nate Spear on. He was the one who brought you up, and we were talking about you. But Ons is similar to you. He turned pro very young. He had a great professional career, and then he retired, and he started a supplement company, and he's a bodybuilding promoter, and he got married, and he has two children. And it's like, hey, don't you want to experience that next step in life, right? I mean, again, like I understand there's something to be said, like about the Josh Wades and the Vinnie Galantes. And I'm friends with Vinny Galante because he's, you know, he's been on my show a couple of times. Something to be said of putting the grind in and finally making it, so on and so forth. But I don't, I, I look at life at like in stages, you know? And uh, yeah. one, of the th- one of the things that I regret is that I don't have children. I mean, it's a long story why I don't have children, but that, I, I, that is going to be my regret for my entire life, right? But it's, it's, a, whole, it's a whole other conversation. But if you're able to have a family and have children after you, um, somebody like you, after you retire and so on and so forth, and uh, that's, that's, that's the, the perfect stages in life. You're setting yourself up. You're making your money when you're young. You're, become, you're doing something that you're really good at. You're really passionate over. And then it's like, okay, as a man, I'm stable enough. I got money. I got, you know, I'm done. I did it. And now let's get, get married, have kids raise a family, make money in business, so on and so forth. And I feel like the people that are on that paradoxical treadmill, they, they miss out on that. And I think that's, they do. I think that's sad personally. Everything takes a back seat to them yeah. doing these shows over and over and over again. Yeah. All right. Let's get onto a, a more fun topic. A lot of shows coming up. What new guys do you like? Everybody loves Nick Walker. I know that, you know, um, so like, well, let me rephrase that. Who do you think is going to do the most damage in the Olympia lineup? Cause there's a lot of young blood coming up. I don't think the top five will be much different than last year. Yeah. I don't think so either. Um, I'm actually like pretty good friends with Nick. I talked with him on like a weekly basis. Uh, we've trained together. Um, I'm good friends with Derek Lunsford. I've stayed at Derek's house. Um, when he was prepping for the Olympia, we got some training in together. Mm-hmm. Um, 
I'm pretty sure Derek's doing 212. I know that hasn't officially been put out there, but I'm I'm sure he's going to do 212. So I have him. Really? Open. Yeah, I just I want him to do open. I think that would make the Olympia so exciting. I think he would do well. Not only would he do well, I think he would. I, I think he has a serious potential of breaking the top five if he did the open. Oh, he would. I think he would crack top five. I don't know why you. And you have to lose a lot of weight to do two twelve. Yeah, a lot I would put him. Weight. I would put Derek over Hunter. In the, uh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. absolutely. yeah. Um, I think the top three is going to be a toss up between Hadi, Nick, and Big Rami. Uh, I'm personally not a big fan of Big Rami at all. Um, yeah, I mean, either, honestly, I know he's a monster, but yeah, I'm not. He, he's a monster, but like, so it's size, symmetry, shape, and proportion. And he's got size, but the symmetry is not there. Yeah. Um, he's got ginormous legs and he has a huge upper body, but his legs are so big. It, there's no flow to that. It's just, mass. it's not, it's not a pretty physique. Because if, if mass was the case, then Marcus Rule would have been winning in the early 2000s. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do you know who said that to me? Actually, the same example. Johnny Jackson said that to me in the same example. Yeah. I don't know if there's been, obviously, besides Big Rami and Ronnie Coleman, but like Marcus Rule was fucking huge. Like, yeah, just he was jacked. He, he didn't have the conditioning, though, that those guys have. If you go no. back and, and look, you know. Oh, not at all. Yeah. But I mean, um, up and coming guys. Um, you know, I think uh, I'm very impressed by Martin Fitzwater. Me too. Um, I competed with Martin at Junior Nationals the year I got second. And uh, from what he looked like then till now, you know, you know, he turned pro young, I think 23 or 24. Yeah. And he like got, he's like, I'm not doing 212. I'm going right in the open. Yeah. And I'm like, dude, like you probably going to get crushed. And then he got fourth in his debut and, he like was just packing on size, so I was very impressed by Martin. Um, yeah, his this Andrew guy that just Andrew won the Jack, Texas, bro, just fucking retarded. I, if he he got fix his posing, um, uh, yeah, you're right, <laughs> and he's got to bring up his hamstrings. But there's so much like potential oozing out of that human being. Like, yeah, and he could yeah. still pack on more muscle. Oh yeah, there's so much more room this, to fill out that. Frame. Yeah, yeah, he pack he puts on ten pounds, and like you said. Does his posing a little better and his hamstrings like like maybe like next year or the year after? Him? It's like who's beating that? Who's that's how you know like he's genetically elite because he's not even doing perfect, but he's winning. Like right, yeah, right, right, perfect, right, right. But winning. So you just know it's a matter of time. Um, Brett Wilkin, um, good friends with Brett. I think uh, Brett has a big future because he hasn't even been doing this that long. Mm. Like he turned pro in classic. I think what was his six years ago maybe mm-hmm. and now he's like full-fledged open bodybuilder nearly 250 on stage yeah um so i think brett has a lot of potential as well certainly does absolutely yeah do you know who i think could seriously break the top five and i think everybody's sleeping on him again because he hasn't competed in some time is um samson Dowda. yeah i saw he's like 330 dude oh, he's <laughs> Fucking jack, and he's like relatively lean. I still got all the lines in his legs. I yeah, was I was like, who? And his his biggest like drawback was his back. His back looks like now it's like I'm like I think these people guys are sleeping on him because uh, I think cut. that may be a guy that it has to be like the kind of like the work your way up in the ranks kind of thing. Yeah, absolutely, like he's yeah. gonna have to do a few showings, but like he belongs up there because yeah, he's yeah, a freak. Yeah, and he, I think he's ten pounds heavier from the uh, Arnold. Yeah, I mean, and if he, he, and he shows up to the Olympia with that same conditioning and ten more pounds of muscle. That picture of just like his front relaxed at three thirty, I was just like, yeah, it was insane. Yeah. The shape, the size, yeah. it was nuts. And he's tall and he's wide, mm-hmm. you know, and it, that, that means a lot. I mean, you look at someone like Andrew Jack, same, you know, same thing. He's tall and wide, and he kind of like. I think I think people are sleeping on him. I think if he comes in and he works with Milos too, who's another great trainer, um, I think I think he could cause some serious damage, you know. But uh, I think I think somebody's going to get knocked out of the top five. Uh, I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if they don't, but I think somebody is going to get knocked out of the top five. You know, um, I think Brandon still has another year in him to be good. I don't think he's done yet, um, but. I wouldn't be surprised because he's the oldest one, you know? Yeah, you got to think. I think Big Rami said this is his last last one he's considering doing. And 
Yeah. Brandon's a, Brandon turned pro in 2008. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's been a long time. And Hottie's, Hottie's not young either. No, 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 not at all. I mean, listen, you know, guys like, uh, you know, they, these guys are approaching 40 and they're still holding it down. You know, guys like Kamal and so on and so forth, you know. The, you know, the athletes are getting better and better and better and better. Every generation, they're getting, you know, the science is getting better. Diet's getting better. You know, the workout is getting better. And it's just getting, you know, it's just getting better and better. So these guys are having longer, uh, they're having longer careers. They're, um, they're bigger, they're rounded, they're harder. I mean, it's just, but, uh, um, yeah, I think, I think Samson's going to, I think Samson's going to, do some damage. I, 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 um, I think Nick Walker is going to do some damage because he put on size too. It's like when you think he somebody can't get any bigger, it's like, Jesus Christ, you know, he's oh, another, no. one. he's another one, you know, I'll say the three biggest people I've ever seen in my life. Uh, I watched Kai green compete at prejudging at the Arnold classic in 2016. I was in the fourth row. Wow. Um, he made like Cedric look small. Yeah. I mean, it, I've never, no one's come close to that level of muscle. Um, Dallas McCarver, I have a picture of him when he was 330. Wow. I'll never forget his calves were so big. He couldn't <laughs> hold his sweatpants over them. Really? So they're just like stuck around his knees because his calves were that big. And like they didn't Christ. fit in the sweatpants. And then Nick, Nick would definitely be third. Yeah, these, um, these guys are these guys are these these guys are big dude. You know, you got you know when I was young, like if somebody was over three hundred, if a pro was over three hundred, that was like a big deal. And there's only like a handful of them. Like they're always like maybe Marcus Rule, Ronnie Coleman, Dorian. You know, I was like normal. Yeah, now yeah, now it's like fucking you know. Uh, oh, speaking of which, how do you think Mike Crizzo was going to do if he does actually turn pro and and qualify? Uh, who was that at cutout? Oh, Mike Crizzo. The um, Russian Russian dude is he Russian or Ukrainian or something? I think he's Russian. Yeah, I I think that's someone that's got a lot of hype around him, but like we don't know until he stands next to those guys. I I agree. I agree I think because it's a big hype hype train kind of thing. Not yeah. saying he's bad. I mean, he looks incredible. Yeah. No, I I agree, and I think I think he's you know because the conditioning that he won over at the other federation wouldn't wouldn't hold wouldn't hold weight here, you know, and if. And I'm sure he knows. I'm sure his trainers know it, and so on and so forth. And uh, you never know because he's he's a young guy. He's almost 300, like 295 or something like that. You know, it's, I think uh, it's, the only guy that's really lived up to height recently is Andrew. Andrew? Yeah, Andrew Jack. Well, I Nick mean, too. Yeah, I mean, Nick's been Nick had hype going into North Americans. I mean, yeah, he's had ever since he made that huge transformation. It's just been a snowball effect of yeah just constant hyping up Nick, which he deserves a hundred percent. I think this, um, you know, transition we kind of talked about of guys getting better and bigger happened in that Jay Ronnie era. Cause Jay didn't win the Olympia till he was 33. That's right. And Ronnie won his first Olympia at 34. Mm -hmm. And you go back like a decade before that, most of those guys were getting out of the sport. Yeah. yeah, yeah at yeah, yeah. that time, Lee Haney was retired at 31. Yeah. So yeah. I think um, I tell people all the time, like you, if you've been doing this 10 years, you really hit your prime at like 30 and then it just kind of escalates. And then usually around 40 kind of shit hits the fan. Right. right, but, right. Um, you know, your body just joints start to look, you know, everything just kind of goes through shit a little bit. Yeah. You can no, see it with Ronnie when he was like 42 or things didn't look right. But yeah, no, it's, it started getting, yeah, out of proportion. And even even Dorian's last last show mm -hmm. when when NASA really should have won. Um yeah. Uh but you could see it was it was time. And he knew it because he retired, you know. You yeah, know, it happened yeah. to Jay too. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. You know, yeah. So I think these guys are just hitting prime at an older age, which you know, I'm trying to Hey, you're cutting out on me there, bro. I can't hear you. Why everyone is like so much rushing the stage nowadays? There we go. I'll oh, give me one second. One. Can no you hear problem. me now? Yeah. Okay. You're good. Yeah, I, I feel like everyone is just so much like rushing the stage nowadays. Yeah. And uh, I, I just don't understand why, because like this shit takes time, dude. At the level you know they're at now. Yeah. Well, I mean, your generation, you are an exception to the rule. Your generation is, I want it now, and they don't want to wait. You know, and uh, and that goes for everything. You know what I mean? That goes for 
you know, uh, money and fame and, and, and uh, you know, whatever, you know, anything, you know, it's just constant, you know, and, uh, you know, uh, but, but you're, you're, you know, you, you're an exception to the rule. You understand what it takes. And uh, it's probably, uh, it's probably because you're Italian, <laughs> you know, and your dad would probably taught you well, like, you know, that kind of thing. Yeah. Should, should take time. So do you, uh, I'm, I'm going to let you go in a minute, but uh, last, last, uh, last question. So on Christmas Eve, do you do you only eat fish too, like I do? Growing up, yes. Yeah. <laughs> and like huge, huge Catholic growing up, but you know, yeah, um, not so much. I eat fish every day now, actually, so it doesn't even matter. But um, well, it's all shellfish. Yeah, on, on Christmas Eve, it's all shellfish. It's also shellfish. I mean, my my grandparents and all of my Italian family are still over in the Chicago area, so I don't get out there much, but. Um, mm. My grandpa passed in, in 2017. Yeah, oh, sorry. To Actually, I have a picture of my grandpa at 17, and he was into weightlifting. Really? He literally looks like a bodybuilder in the 1940s. It's really? <laughs> it's like great. the genetic, it runs it runs long. But um, <laughs> I do miss like going out there for Christmas time because, dude, it's just like big aluminum foil trays of pastas meatballs wine i mean it's just like it's all my grandmother's cooking yeah yeah that's my house on uh christmas and christmas eve well it's not my house we go to my brother's now for a long time went to my mother's but my mother's 87 years old now she really can't do it so we go to my brother's but that's basically that's basically how it still is you know with me you know it's uh i'm sure you got like being out in jersey you got like good somewhat good restaurants out there that compare yeah uh jersey is good i moved to jersey my wife grew up in jersey i grew up in new york Mm. and i moved to jersey about 11 years ago so um i'm partial to new york with the food and the and the cake and and so on and so forth and uh but there my wife is we've we've done we've gone to some restaurants over here that are that are really really pretty good and my wife is Greek. She's not Italian. And um, yeah, my fiance is mostly Greek. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, that's yeah. cool. And but it's you know she her father was a cook, so she well a Greek you know Greek men they're all they're all freaking cooks. They all own the diners. They're all cooks. And uh, so she's really a foodie. My wife, she you know she's not really into working out too much, but she's she's a foodie. You know, so like we're going on vacation this week. I'm like. She's like, I found this restaurant. Like, just book it. Like, whatever you want. Yeah. I don't give a shit. Like, you, you no, people know. are like, we should go get Italian. And I have to explain to them. I'm like, there's like a 0% chance we're going to find something I'm going to be satisfied with. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Like, yeah, I've yeah. been spoiled my whole life. I mean, there's like two spots I can think of in Michigan that I have to drive an hour to go to. Yeah, yeah, But yeah, it's yeah, just yeah. like, uh, they're, they're nothing that great. Man. No, they're not. Compared. Especially you get out to the Midwest, you know, it's just... You get out to the Midwest and it's just not a lot of them are chain restaurants and, and, yeah, and, and whatnot, good. you know, even the, yeah, it is what it is. But when you, you know what, if you do the New York pro mm. and we'll keep in touch, cause I like keeping in touch with the guys that I interview. And when you do the New York pro the next day, I'll take you to a good fucking Italian restaurant. Cause you're right in my backyard. The New York pro is like 20 minutes from me every year in uh, Teaneck. Absolutely. Listen, yeah, dude, I always want uh, the big okay. thing of me. Big C after the show is like uh, yeah, 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 my yeah. go-to. Yeah. Do you know, uh, one more thing, and I'll let you go. Uh, uh, there's this restaurant that I grew up with in Brooklyn. It was called Joe's of Avenue U. And uh, it's mostly, like, it's Italian, but it's mostly Sicilian. Mm-hmm. So uh, they make things like uh, Vasted, Vasted specials, um, uh, uh, macaroni with, uh, with, uh, with, uh, 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 Jesus Christ, sardines, it's yep. sardines and and breadcrumb, and the pasta is really different because it's pasta. It's like it looks like round pasta linguine. It looks like it looks like a thicker spaghetti with a hole down the middle. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, and the vasted and the vasted specials are um, cow uh, cow stomach. Oh, you know? really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you would never know it. it was, it's is, fucking, is it good? Yeah, it's fucking delicious. But you would you wouldn't you wouldn't fucking know it. And then when I told my wife, she's like, I don't eat that shit. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of best you don't know. <laughs> yeah, that's that's what happens. All right, Dom, listen, man. It's been a pleasure. I really appreciate you coming on, dude. And congratulations once again. I I I I know you're gonna be uh you're gonna be an elite bodybuilder. It's just 
destined. So listen, much, much love, much respect. We will, we will keep in touch. And if you want to be a part of bodybuilding talk, I could have you come on with me and Jason Ons and maybe somebody else. And we could shoot the shit about bodybuilding. Absolutely. Just shoot me a DM. Let me know. All right, Don. Thanks a lot, man. Listen, have a good night. Okay. All right. You too, man. All right, brother. Talk to you soon. See ya.